Hi everybody, Bobby Ogilvie, Project Manager and Professional Coach. So, how do I learn the best, or how do I make the best use of, of feedback? So, uh, I, I would say that this is the, the second of four videos that are dealing with uh, topics in relation to a paper I wrote a couple months ago uh, on this stuff, and it deals with the four, in, in the realm of trying to get more out of our the, dealing with the advent of automation and trying to get the most out of our human minds and our, our work productivity. It's dealing with four main topics of attention, feedback and learning, visualization, and flow. Okay, so uh, learning and feedback. Um, the way you learn something in, in a mental sense, and this even relates to machine learning and AI, um, is we're dealing with feedback loops. So we need to, um, if you think of this as iterative cycle, we we're trying to do a thing or we're getting a bit of results or we're kind of putting some idea out there. We're marking it. We're seeing how good it is or we're seeing the kind of results we get. And we use that as a closed loop input to adjust what we're doing or what we're thinking, right? Um, so in an operational sense, maybe you're learning a language and it's like you're practicing it. You're getting better at the phonemes or you know, you're learning some kind of math or some algorithm thing. You're practicing it. You're getting better at executing those um, or, or whatever it is, right? So one important aspect here is that, uh, I guess the first part is you can kind of pause it or try something. You can do something, right? It becomes practical. Um, I think we can all uh, relate in terms of our schooling. There might be times that, you know, there's some textbook thing we need to learn, but if we can't practice it, we don't really know it deeply, we don't remember it deeply, and we probably can't be able to apply it. So the more we can apply something, the better. And so that, that first notion of even trying something, even on a very small scale, doesn't even have to be a big project, but in, in the short-term momentary sense of being able to pause it or do something, practice something, that's the first piece of it, right? Then we get into the, the feedback of the results, how you did on something. And you want that to be as close, as co-occurring, and as specific as possible. Um, because that, that is the data you're going to, to need to be able to adjust, right? So the more you can get that feedback loop down, the better. Um, so when we're dealing with, I mean, things like sports, it can be great. Uh, it can be really fast, basically instantaneous, because once you understand how a sport works and where someone wants to be, or if you think of like a, a, a team situation, like a 5v5 sport, like a, you know basketball or something, once you understand how basketball works in a very momentary sense, you can tell is someone in the right spot or not? Did I perform well or not? Am I moving fast enough? Uh, and you can instantly adjust. But as, you know, we're intellectual workers these days. We're innovation workers. So as we're dealing with intellectual tasks, how do I do sales properly? How do I develop this product? Am I dealing my, with my stakeholder communications well? And lots of other intellectually, you know, intangible stuff. Um, that feedback loop can get longer and more ambiguous about what the results are. So anything to help clarify that will help you and will help you learn faster um, and will help you get more practical in your choices. Um, there's other, other stuff we'll get into later about flow states, but the uh, feedback loops are really important for flow states because you, you need that instantaneous feedback to be able to merge action and awareness. Um, and I guess then the last piece of that was to say that feedback, that input, th that becomes an input back in so you can practice or, or pause at that again. And essentially it's the adjustment piece of learning, right? Um, Sometimes I, I experience uh, learning, if you think of the kind of dichotomies your mind is going through between kind of uh, uh, clarity or the sense of like you get this broad level kind of schema or sense of cohesion, coherence versus uh, confusion or kind of experimentation, right? Um, and and you're, you're all going to personally experience that in your own ways, but you you want to be able to take that feedback loop in and adjust. So from a, ma a manager, a team manager, an operations manager. That's one of the reasons you want clear feedback. And, and in that sense, I would say people generally need to be more positive because you want to be saying, well, these are the good things. You don't need to change these or, you know, these are sufficient. And these are, these are areas I, I want improvement or these are areas that need to get better. And then that allows the feedback loop to keep going. That allows you to learn and, and get better at things. Um, really important skill. Um, it, we, we go through more career changes than ever, and that's both, I think, an internal thing, but also a, a market force a job market uh, thing. And so um, our ability to, to learn and adapt is really important, not just in broad career changes, but in terms of our own ability to master content. And I, I would say, furthermore, it's important in that I think we're becoming ever more pragmatic about the ability to get real applied results as opposed to someone who, you know, who has studied something, someone who's a, the a theoretical whatever. I think lots of us are very skeptical at this point at the value of 
undergrads, uh, or particularly very nebulous and unpractical undergrads that don't always have a clear operational focus, clear operational output, right? Um, and so e e even at this point, right, you know, if you're looking for a salesperson, you know, if someone has a marketing, has studied marketing in their background, well, that, that can definitely be very useful. But we also really value sales and marketing experience. What real projects, what real selling have you done, right? Um, and so we, we intuitively kind of get that sense, right? How practiced are you with this? Um, and if you think of even the way we uh, approach our professional designations, right? You might need very, you know, thousands of hours of practice before you can get this. And that's really what marks their professional value. So if you think of, let's say, an engineer who has their PN, right? It's not just that they got an engineering degree. It's that they have at least four years and I think maybe four or 5,000 um, contact hours of experience that they've practiced and applied this stuff. And so that's really what you're buying. And same thing for coaches, same things for project managers, same things for all kinds of people. Right? If they have these designations, you're saying, so beyond saying they, they adhere to a certain uh, theory and professional framework, which helps direct their thinking and get results. The main thing is they have tons of practice at this, right? Um, in that way, one, one of the ways of thinking about what is a professional, which I really like as a, you know, contrasting them to an amateur, you know, an amateur might succeed. They, they might have the skills and capacity to, to succeed at something. Um, a professional won't fail. A professional is reliable. They know enough about what leads to success and failure uh, and they had to be practical about getting results that they can reliably get you the result. And that's part of what you're paying for, right? Um, so anyway, so back to this notion of, of feedback and learning. Um, important individually in terms of bringing out your own best and learning. Uh, and it's important from a management perspective that that clear feedback becomes part of developing your team. Uh, I really like that too because it also fits with the notion of transformational leadership. So just to recap what that is, um, you're trying to establish a culture of trust and communication. Um, you're trying to develop or transform people. P people are your most important assets, right? And and so your job as a leader is to develop and transform and train others. And then ultimately, as they be gain capacity themselves, then you can actually delegate and get them to execute more and more, right? And take, you know, take more of the reins off, have them be more uh, autonomous in that way. But um, it, it has a really big regard for the talent management role of a, of a leader or, or a manager. And so really as an operations type manager um you you really want to be thinking that way about about your people um that these people need to be developed over time what do i need to do to set them up for for success or you could even you know more operationally think of it as an onboarding process you know what point do we need to get them to where are they coming in at and what are the steps we need to do what what do we need to see to get them to that point how do we help them practice and learn and do this stuff to get them to where we want them to be really important things to think. Um, and the more you can add crunch around that feedback, the more you can add crystal clear feedback in different areas. Maybe it's a rubric sheet. Um, maybe it's, I don't know, monthly or quarterly evaluations, the better. Uh, one other thing I'll throw out here, and, and obviously I uh, I have my own interest in this given my, my background in coaching, but the, the trend seems to be, we've all we've probably all heard of annual performance valuations, right? But they're not effective for a few different reasons. One, the main thing is they're very biased, they're unreliable as a source of data, but they also, secondly, don't drive better performance. So what's actually quickly replacing them is coaching, right? And uh, it could be internal, or I would say more than often tends to be an external coach, right? So if you think of the whole point of performance valuations, one of the points um, should be about getting more out of your talent, talent development. And again, that fits with transformational leadership. You're developing your talent, developing your people. Um, coaching is quickly replacing this stuff. You're trying to get the best out of your people. Uh, and that's that. Uh, so I, I would really get you guys to to think about that um, when you're thinking about how to get the most out of your teams, how to develop your talent, um, how, how to get the practical results you need from people. Um, and uh, think about how those professional designations could also fit in these different areas as well, which can basically codify that yes you have enough experience in this area to reliably deliver results so i know these are might, might seem like a, a range of different topics around uh, feedback and learning but um hopefully this is helping you guys individually and particularly as a manager approach how you deal with feedback and learning and getting the most out of your people something i deeply believe in and i hope you can believe in it too i'm bobby ogilvy project manager professional coach i will talk to you guys again soon <laughs>